Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you. Welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Before we get started today, we'd appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly, send us an email at frontlinerejects at gmail.com. Today's content is made possible by one of our viewers, Mr. Jared Russell, who very kindly donated today's bullets for testing. And the bullets are 156 grain Norma Alaska round nose soft points in .264 diameter, which we've got loaded up in 6.5 Creedmoor, going just over 2,600 feet per second out of our Savage Axis. We're very excited to see how they're gonna perform, and we just wanna say thanks one last time to Mr. Russell before we get started. Hey, good whatever, dude. All right. Don't miss. I'll try not to. You know, we're at, we're at what, 600 right now? I hope you're not adjusted for six. <laughs> we'll find out. Wow. Pretty good shot. Did I miss? <laughs> So how are you feeling today about these uh, 156 graders? Oh, I feel pretty good. Kind of a crazy shape to them, huh? Yeah, they look a little wonky. Yeah, you know what? Uh, Norma actually uh, advertises these as a moose hunting round. <laughs> we'll see about that. Holy shit. All right. And then left row, right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't at the uh, left row. You got a live round in there? Yeah, I do. All right. I think, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, you know. To be honest with you, I'm a little hammered. Well, dude, we kind of just, you know, we, we sort of wing this stuff. Yeah. Definitely not an exact science. No. Nope. Send up a few Hail Marys, see what happens. Well, I'd say that probably worked out for you. Yeah, it looked pretty good to me. Yep. Yeah. Nice thing about the uh, 6.5, you got to see uh, the impact. Yeah, it's um, a very forgiving cartridge. <laughs> Let me get on target. Yeah. All right, spotter is on. We are gathered here today, sports fans, to watch Andreas fail miserably. Well, I think I failed. Might have to come back another day. <laughs> All right, spotter's on. You know who is uh, vastly underrated, in my opinion? Who's that? T Swift. Oh, yeah, T Sweezy? Yeah, man. Love me some T Swizz. Oh, yeah. Now she's uh, definitely underrated. Yeah, her earlier albums really, really rocked my world. Oh, yeah. We will never, ever, ever get back together. Fuck yeah. Solid hit, bro. Fuck yeah. Overall, the Norma Alaskas did pretty well. We didn't have high hopes for expansion at longer ranges given the weight of the projectiles and the velocities we had them moving at. That expectation was borne out, and today's test was intended more to test how well these bullets would work for applications 300 yards and in, which is in part why we decided to shoot the 50 instead of the 500, but we'll get into more on that later. At 50 yards, we have just about textbook expansion for a non-bonded soft point. At this range, like every range which initiated proper expansion, the core was retained by the jacket, which is something we don't see too often when shooting non-bonded rounds here on the channel. At 100, we still have fantastic mushrooming. The bullet opened up beautifully, but even at 100, when compared to 50, we see the expansion is ending higher up the shank. At 200, this becomes very evident. The round sheds more velocity and expansion decreases, but this is, in my opinion, still a good result. 300 is where we drop from good to acceptable in my book. I would still feel comfortable hunting with this bullet at this range. As the graves will show, we still did get around 1.5 times expansion at 300 yards, which in my opinion is sufficient to transfer energy to the target. At 400, the round tumbled on impact and the top half was torn off. I think the bullet was right in the velocity range of too fast to FMJ, but too slow to initiate expansion. 
So we get keyholing and tearing of the jacket, leading to about half of the lead core lost. Getting into our graphs at 50 and 100, we have expansion in excess of two times the original size of the projectile. This drops consistently at each range past 100, but like we mentioned earlier, 1.6 times expansion at 300 is still pretty decent. At 4, we had the bullet tumbling with the jacket tearing away, so while the projectile measured 1.8, I wouldn't consider that a good result. We can also see on weight that at 400, there's a significant reduction from the loss section of core. Average overall expansion is 1.99, damn near twice the original diameter, and average weight retention was just shy of 80%, which is great for a non-bonded round. Weight retention at each range was stellar, minus the 400 of course. From 50 to 300, the bullet retained slightly more weight, and this may be the lowest weight standard deviation we've recorded for a non-bonded, non-monolithic bullet so far. It is, however, not fair to measure this bullet by the numbers to other bullets that we have tested in 6.5 Creedmoor, because we no shot non-standard ranges with this bullet. Instead of 100 to 500, we did 50 to 400, so it's not a fair comparison. Now, we did attempt to shoot 500. Make this one? <laughs> Dude, fingers crossed. You can kind of see from the target cam that the impact was a little underwhelming as there wasn't much energy transferred to the target. Andreas did a fantastic job though. The shot had damn near perfect placement and we figured we'd caught it. But alas, at this range, the projectile must have been moving well under the speed needed for proper expansion, and her belief is that it fully FMJ'd. The Alaska punched through the first jug and exited, leaving an exit hole identical to the entry hole. It repeated this for the following eight jugs, and also successfully penetrated 18 layers of bath towels, 12 sheets of cardboard with compressed layers of paper in between, and a three-quarter inch sheet of plywood. We found a fresh divot in the ground behind the target stand, directly in line with the exit hole in the plywood. We spent about 45 minutes examining the hillside for the lost bullet while we were able to recover a number of other projectiles during our search, including a terminal ascent which we had lost during testing, we were unable to locate the Alaska. We debated sending another round, but the first one at 500 had punched squarely through all of the material we had on hand, which hasn't failed us in stopping any other direct hits from a wide variety of bullet types before, so we scrapped that idea. Considering the lack of expansion at 4 and how slow the bullet would have been traveling at that point, we didn't feel it would be worth the ammunition expenditure. We did need a fifth data point, so we decided to go back and shoot at 50 yards, which is unusual for us when using this chambering, but we thought it would be relevant as closer ranges are really where this bullet in this chambering shines, and it would be more representative of what most shooters using it would be doing. A hand loader probably could get this bullet to within its expansion threshold at longer ranges such as 400 and 500 yards by using it in different .264 diameter cartridges such as 264 Win Mag or 65 PRC which would generate higher muzzle velocities. I'm not sure I'd see much point in doing that though. This round has what most long range shooters would consider to be a very low G1 ballistic coefficient at .276. Even if you can get the velocity needed to open this bullet up past 300 in any sort of wind you'll find your groups opening up quite a bit. This theory is in line with our experience. When we shot these, the day was pretty calm. We had a few small gusts here and there, but for the most part it was windless day and past 300 we had to incorporate a lot of guesswork and good old yeeting. All that said, I don't see this bullet as a bad choice at all so long as it's paired with the right application. As part of that, it's important to manage our expectations. For ranges 300 yards and in, especially in terrain that incorporates a large amount of thick foliage, this bullet would be a superior option. At 500, the bullet we sent through a proverbial shit ton of material didn't deviate from its course until it came in contact with a literal mountain. There were no signs of keyholing along its entire path, and I think this would be mirrored when shooting through thick brush. If a hunter plans to hunt exclusively in dense foliage, this bullet would be an excellent choice. You could alleviate very realistic concerns that you might have regarding bullet deflection with a Spitzer profile projectile. Another point this highlights is how versatile ammunition development has allowed rifles to become. A hunter could take their 6.5 or other 264 diameter rifle on a mountain goat hunt in the high alpine running 100 grain Barnes TTSXs north of 3200 feet per second and confidently take shots at 700 yards. Then the following week, go hunt deer or elk in the thick timber and turn that same rifle into basically a brush gun with some slow moving 156 grain round nosers plowing through any twigs or shrubbery which dared to get in the way. This to me really demonstrates the benefits that hand loaders have. Hand loading allows a user to adapt and optimize their rifle for any condition they know they'll be in. Hunters who aren't hand loading still can do this. It just takes, in my opinion, a bit more time and effort spent on researching and learning about their gun. Loading for this bullet can be a bit tricky. 
It took some effort on our part to find load data for the, a bullet this heavy in 6.5 Creedmoor. After finally sourcing what seemed like reliable data, we used a maximum charge of the powder with the fastest listed velocity. The 156 grain Norma Alaska may seem like a very odd choice at first, and even second, glance. But it and other bullets like it on the outer ends of the spectrum for any chambering allow a hunter to maximize their opportunities across many more available species and geographies while sticking to one rifle or one cartridge. We hope you've enjoyed today's presentation, and if you've found that you got something out of it, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you've got any comments or suggestions for future testing, drop that in the comments section below. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.